Good afternoon and welcome to my daily broadcast. This is episode 477 and the topic today is rash decisions will cost you and I'll offer a better way. So before I jump into that let me introduce myself so you know who I am and where I'm coming from as it were and what I'm about. My name is Barry Selby. Um, I am a best-selling author, speaker and relationship attraction expert and I help strong successful women create and find balance in love, life and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine and every day for the last year and quite a bit, <laughs> especially for the last uh, year and a half, for sure I've done a daily broadcast, it was weekly before that, but a daily talk called Messages from the Masculine to Inspire Your Feminine Heart. And today's talk, today's topic, today's episode is number 477, so yes there's a bunch of these out there and I'm doing this on Facebook Live by the way in case you're watching this on the replay. Uh, on YouTube or listen to it on my podcast and I'll give you the links to those at the end. And the topic today, again, is rash decisions will cost you and a better way. So let me speak a bit about the former before I get to the latter, shall we? So let's jump in. This topic is not relationship specific, strangely enough. It applies to many things, but it tends to happen a lot in relationships or at least in, c in communication where there's emotion involved which oftentimes is a relationship. So it's, I'm gonna play with it actually because of an experience that just happened literally like 20 minutes ago. Um, I'm just making sure I protect the parties before I explain it. Yes, that will work. Um, but, th but take this to heart if you're in a relationship that's happened or if you've got it in family dynamics because a lot of times in family dyna dynamics there's a lot of that reactionary um, what we're looking for. Impromptu is the wrong word, but a reactionary response that basically ends up costing more than it was worth doing in the first place. But anyway, I'm jumping ahead of myself. So in the context of what's going on, um, my, there's a few of us collaborating on a project and a friend of mine and I were talking because of the way that one of our group had been, um, you know, be careful I say this, I don't want to put any, I don't want to out anybody, but I also want to make this clear in the teaching. So basically they weren't in, in agreement with everything else we were doing. I'll put it that way. And I'm being very, very vague enough to protect the innocent because otherwise I might get in trouble. So, <laughs> but I'll make sure the teaching is still in, intact. So in this group, one of, the, one of the participants was choosing to do something different. It wasn't aligned with the whole group's project. And my friend and I were talking because we're, on, we're in running this and we're kind of in charge. And this um, text message back and forward, I was starting to get to a point where I was really getting to the place of being sarcastic. Yes, I do that occasionally, just so you know. And there was this immediate rush to go, screw it, let's kick him out, I don't care about him. Now I didn't say that, but that was what, that was what was behind some of my messaging. So even though it wasn't verbally, out, wasn't in the text that we're going through, it was in my awareness. And I think my friend picked it up because she sort of responded back to me in a way that was like, are you feeling this instead? And I was like, oh, hmm, yes. So we both decided, or I should say she advised me, <laughs> to um, take a time out, as it were. I did not do any, not make any rash decisions, and that's what inspired this talk. Because I realized that in, in 20 minutes of hindsight, not that long, that it might be right to kick them out, but where I was coming from wasn't taking everything into account. So the recognition is that taking time to value it was important for me and for them and for the relationships we have to make the right choice. Now let me take this over into relationship. Oh, there's so many places to play with this, so many places to play. If you're, in, if you're in a relationship, this may be resonating for you and if you were in one recently or a while ago, you may resonate with this too. It's tempting in a relationship to presume we know what the other person's thinking. Ooh, none of you have done that before, have you? But this, this preconceived presumption about the other person is a, um, sorry, move the camera slightly. That's a bit better. Okay. I feel like I'm inhabiting more of the screen. I can see myself above, the, above all the typing. Um, this presumption of the other person's thinking and a way of being means that we oftentimes make assumptions about what the other person is going to say, do, or present. And oftentimes it's stuff that isn't accurate. In fact, I know of many relationships, including some of my own, where those assumptions, those jumping the gun, those um, unconsidered reactions 
interesting way of putting it, I guess, cause a lot more rift and pain and hurt and less loving. So if you're in a relationship where you've done that a couple of times, here's a little clue. You might want to do something different. Just a suggestion. So in this context, what I want to speak to and this framing is to say that decisions, especially decisions that can affect your relationship with somebody else in a big way, are some things that you want to consider with some um, awareness is the word I want to use. But there's more to it than that. It's more about having more considerations, very better word. Because again, those rash decisions that we make are oftentimes without any consideration. We're just reacting in the moment and we're going, forget it, I'm out of here. Or forget it, you screwed up, or you made a mistake. Now, some of the relationship challenges I'm speaking to are bigger than other ones. So it may be something as simple as um, reacting to something a partner said and on the way out slamming the door on them, which can be an emotionally disturbing and upsetting thing to do, but it can feel good in the moment. So it's tempting to do that. On the other, on another, another level or another uh, more invested moment, it could be when you discover your partner cheated on you. Now, it might be a hard and fast rule that you have that when they cheat, if they cheat, you're out. That's one thing. But also, at the same time, there might be something that happened that maybe, or maybe it comes, let me, actually, let me reframe it another way. Hmm, here's a more juicy one. If you are in a relationship with somebody and you think they cheated on you, but you don't know, but you find what may be evidence, a hair on their collar, or some, I'm, 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 I'm realizing I'm being non-gender specific, so I'm just thinking about both sides of the equation. So something about their demeanor, something about their stuff has, gives you a feeling that they may be seeing somebody else. So you make a rash decision that you're going to chew them out or you're going to walk away, you're going to pack, kick the stuff, throw the stuff out the window or you're going to leave, whatever it is. Now I know this situation happening before, so not in my life, it's somebody I know, so I'm going to give you that other shoe dropping, so you know what I mean. It turned out, in fact, that what was going on was that the partner wasn't cheating. They are actually seeing a friend about something they wanted to do for their partner, as in they were consulting behind their partner's back to find out how to best serve them. I think it, was a, it may be a Christmas present, something like that. But the, but the partner was so assumptive about what was happening, they were going to basically kick, the, kick their, friend, their partner to the curb and walk away. But it turned out something else was going on. So... Mass decisions can be that extreme where you're going to lose a relationship because of something you made a mistake in thinking about and doesn't work. So, okay, I've given you a couple of examples. Let me, let, me, let me give you some solutions because I've given you a lot of the, oh my gods, and shouldn't do that, and maybe you shouldn't, and stuff like that. So let me speak to a solution, which is really simple. You know that, that they talk about in, in um, I want to call this, common language psychology, I guess you'd call it, is that if you get upset, you want to count to 10. Well, when you have a reaction to somebody's way of being and you want to make a decision, I do suggest, I do encourage you to count to 10, but differently. What I mean by that is rather than come to a place where something happens and you, and you, you know, this massive reaction comes up, you, you stop and just go and take a few breaths. Because if you have to make a decision in that moment, this is the thing. If you have to make a decision at that moment, it's better for you to take the time to breathe and get present and consider, because when you do this, by the way, if you take 10 seconds or take 10 breaths or take some time to excuse yourself and go to the bathroom or do something to present yourself to yourself, you will find that there are way more solutions showing up than the one you had right on the tip of your tongue, which may have been reaction, which may have been negative, which may have been derogatory, whatever it was. So this consideration gives you space to look at things and respond differently. Now, a couple of things I want to throw on there on the table as well. I'm a big I'm a big fan of big fan of? Yeah, I guess I'm a big fan of meditation as a life skill. It's also a powerful place for contemplation when you are dealing with decisions. So when you feel like your decision you're gonna be rash about and you can react to, it's not gonna work for you. Thank you, Adriana. Yes. Taking taking ten breaths is a good way of doing it. If you have more time, again meditation if you do meditate frequently or regularly, which is what I, I tend to do or as much as I can, because sometimes it's not consistent, I must admit, I find that when I'm in a situation where something comes up to challenge me, I can access that space, that energy pretty quickly. And it gives me this, um, 
<laughs> so, actually, got Dr. Who analogy showed up. That was interesting. The idea being is when you meditate, when you have a meditative consciousness and awareness in your life, when things happen out there in the world, you can retreat into that space to consider things more easily. And like the TARDIS in Doctor Who, this is the analogy, like it's bigger on the outside than it, bigger on the inside is on the outside. If you've seen the series, you know what I mean. In meditation, you have an inner, inner um, spaciousness that you can actually enter into to consider your reactivity of what's happening and actually to um, facilitate your own calmness. And by doing that, you can look at what happened and see, how do I really want to respond to that? What lines up? What's really true? What's aligned for me? And by doing so, you can actually find yourself in a place of um, centeredness from which you can respond from a more aware, caring, conscious place. Like breathing for 10 seconds, or I should say like taking 10 breaths, it's a powerful place to reposition yourself back to your center. Because the thing about making decisions when you're doing them rash, they're usually when you're off center. They're usually in a place where you're actually in reaction, especially when you're in a loving relationship or in a relationship with somebody where you're invested emotionally. Because when you're invested emotionally, that's the fuel that um, is sparked like gunpowder and blows you up in reaction. A wise move instead is rather than let that happen, is choose to step inside, to turn within, to take a moment, take a breath, however you want to do that, and to sit with what's happening and go, what really works? Because as I said before at the beginning, this decision I was looking to make wasn't going to be constructive ultimately. I would have had fun doing it, but it wouldn't have been constructive. So as I'm, taking, as I'm saying this to you, as I'm sitting with what happened earlier, which I mentioned earlier in the broadcast, by the way, if you didn't catch that, it's at the beginning. I can see other options. Now, it may still go that direction, but my choice is much more um, diffused now. It's not like the blue touch paper and run away because it's going to blow up. It's more about, is that going to work or this is going to work? And it gives me a chance to make a rational decision. And in your case, if you're dealing with this in your relationships, be it family, business, romantic, any of the relationships, taking the time to breathe, to meditate, to contemplate, to say, I'll get back to you in a few minutes, because that's another way of doing it, by the way, gives you the space to make a decision from a higher place. And that, I highly recommend, is a way to be in any relationship. Because I know for myself, and I'm sure you have experiences too, in partial relationships, be it romantic, friendship, or any other relationship, I have ruined relationships by saying things I shouldn't have done because I reacted too quickly. I wasn't in a place of, um, I didn't have my wherewithal about me, as it were. I didn't have my presence with me. I wasn't a present to myself, and I made a mistake. So I'm advising you or recommending to you that when it comes to those sort of rash decision temptations that you go, whoa, hold your horses, let me consider this for a moment. There is usually no time limit on this. You don't have to make a decision inside three seconds. You may think you have to, but reality is nine times out of 10, you can say, you know what, I need five minutes or 10 breaths or a day to decide about this. Because the reality is this, that you can make a decision later on that will be much more effective and still accepted more than 10 minutes away or 10 minutes after. I feel better now taking, talking about this. I guess I need to do it for myself. So hopefully it was a value to you too, but I need to sort myself through this to remind myself of what's important. Um, yeah. I feel better now. Thank you <laughs> for watching. I hope this has helped you too. So rash decisions will generally not serve you taking time to contemplate, to consider, to process for yourself, and to be present to what's possible as an answer so you have more choices showing up. is a much more effective, healthy, and successful way of living your life. And that's the key to life. Ta-da! <laughs> I hope it's been a help to you. Um, this is one of my daily events, ideas, suggestions, concepts about relationships, about love in all sorts of areas. And this one, again, like a few others I've done this week, is not necessarily romantic relationship-centric or gender-specific. This is applied to everybody in life. So I hope it's been a value to you. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please put in the comments below. And if you have questions about anything I do, you can reach out to me. Um, this talk I'm realizing, it's like I, I posted four different links yesterday with my broadcast because I was talking about so much stuff. Today I don't feel like I have any. Okay, well, <laughs> it's a standalone, I guess. All right, so I appreciate you being with me on the broadcast. I'm thinking of anything else I need to tell you. Oh, yes, of course. <coughs> if you're watching the replays, you can watch the replays on Facebook in my business page, which is Barry Selby author on Facebook. You can also watch them on YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby. You're welcome, Adriana. Thank you for watching. Um, they're also on my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby, and the playlist is Messages from the Masculine. 
I'm also building out my podcast, which is called Messages from the Masculine, where you can also subscribe and download my broadcast there, which is in audio format. And that's it. Um, I have other links I want to talk about, but they're not relevant to this, so I'm going to hold off because that would be that would be sheer pr self promotion. I'm going to do that again. Rash decisions. So, thank you for watching with me as always. I'm back in tomorrow. Um, if you do want help in this area, you want to talk further, I do at least invite you to come check out and have a chat with me. If you go to my website, which is barryselby.com forward slash chat, I'll put the link in the comments. At least have a conversation about where you are about love and relationships. If you need help and guidance, and I can offer suggestions. That's my gift to you. With that, I thank you for watching. I will see you again tomorrow, same time, same channel, 5 p.m. Pacific time on Facebook Live. And, uh, and that, I think, is it. Thanks for being with me, and I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.